Hey, what's up everyone? Aaron from Unison here today. Today I'm going to be talking about how to start a song. So, you know, if you get writer's block or even if you're a new producer and you're just like, you know, there's so much to do inside of a DAW like FL Studio or Ableton or Pro Tools or whatever it might be and you're just like, I am just so lost. I have no idea where to even start. Well, today I'm going to be talking about five different ways to go and kind of help spark creativity and what I do to kind of help spark ideas for myself to kind of get into the flow of making music. So let's get into it. So for this video, I really kind of thought back to when I first started making music in Ableton and kind of where my mind was, how I was approaching things versus now, you know, I do it completely different. And so I thought it would be a good exercise to go back to the methods that I did use when I first started out making music in Ableton and hopefully it'll kind of make it a bit more approachable to use and not so daunting. But a special feature that's inside of Ableton Ableton that is really fun to kind of mess around with are these different kind of clips that you can do inside of this session view. So if you use a tab on your keyboard, you can you can switch between these two. So here is arrangement view. As you can see, it's all grayed out because I'm using session view right now. Um, but this is what I mainly use and what you've also seen in previous videos as well that I've used. But when I was first starting out making music, I was using this mode a lot. And all it is is, you know, it's the same thing, but you have like these short patterns that I can kind of go and play around with. So, you know, I have like this drum loop that I made in this little instrument called drum rack. And so all I did was just chose a bunch of samples to use and just dragged them in here. And then I can go into here uh, by just clicking on this clip. Um, if you don't have a clip, you can just double click on there and it'll make a new clip for you. So if I right click and delete that and go back to this one, here is the MIDI, here's all the samples that I used. Uh, as, as you can see here, I'm using these unison samples to create the beat and it only shows whatever samples that you dragged into there, into the uh, drum rack, I mean, and you only see that when it comes to the piano roll. So then it makes it a lot more easier to see everything. And then even more so you can use this fold, which will go and only show what is being used in terms of like MIDI input on this channel. So anyways, um, this is great because then you can kind of demo out different ideas. So, you know, I have like this drum loop happening, but say I made like also this bass thing, then it will go and start on the next uh, first beat of the bar. So it won't just come in randomly, it will stay in time. So that way you can kind of demo and kind of preview ideas out. And that's a good kind of way to kind of start getting inspiration for a song by just kind of putting different ideas together. So, you know, I have this bass and I have these drums. And then I also have this melody here that I did too. And I can play this with it. And so by doing that, then I can kind of get an idea of like, oh, okay, uh, these work well together. So then I can go ahead and just hold down, like click and hold down, hit the tab key, and I can drag it over here and just drop it on whatever channel it's on. Um, I can't drop it right now because it's all grayed out. So if I go up here and click this little orange arrow, it will reset and allow me to place things wherever. Next thing I want to talk about is extracting MIDI from a sample. And so that's a great feature inside of Ableton um, where you can go and take a sample and take either the chord progression data or the melody data or even like drum data from the sample and turn it into MIDI so that way you can use your own samples or your own presets or whatever it might be that you want to use. So as you can see here, I took this sample um, this unison sample and it sounds like this So actually I went ahead and pitched it down six So if we just bring it back to the normal pitch, this is how it originally sounds So yeah, I brought it down six semitones and then I went and changed a couple of parts As you see here there's minus three and this part here is minus four so normally it sounds like this. It's just the same kind of pattern repeated over and over throughout the whole thing, but I changed these last couple of notes in this last phrase. So now it sounds like this. 
and so then I just went ahead and you can right click on the sample and you have here the three options that I mentioned earlier you can change uh, co convert harmony which are basically chords and so you'll get more information that's related to chords um, then there's melody which in this case we would probably use that since this is just a melody happening and then of course there's also drums as well and so that's a nice feature to be able to take a sample and make it your own and so as you can see here I went ahead and have the MIDI right here in this clip um, you can see that here it has the same exact name as the sample down here and I went and just put my own preset in here And so now I can make it my own and I can go and change the notes if I wanted to as well. But at least I have a starting point to go and kind of, you know, just gain some inspiration. And so by having that, I feel like that's a good way to kind of start. All right, so we went and talked about using a sample and getting MIDI from that. But now I want to talk about only using MIDI and kind of manipulating the MIDI and using different things to go and kind of make a very complex melody, chord progression, etc. So first thing here, I have this chord progression that I pulled from this pack here. Uh, this is a free pack from Unison's website. Uh, this is called Unison Essentials Advanced MIDI Chord Progressions. And so I went in here into folder number two and just grabbed this major chord progression and it sounds like this. And so then what I did is, this is what I've done. I went ahead and changed some of the notes. I've changed the key of the chord progression as well. I think I dropped it down maybe like four or five notes or semitones as you might call them. And so uh, then I went ahead and took some of the notes from the original chord progression and threw them up an octave for some inverted chords, uh, but they're not necessarily inverted chords because I did change some of the notes. So. Uh, there's just a little bit different voicing now. So now the chord progression sounds like this. And, and so now, you know, I have this chord progression that is a bit more unique, more my own, versus just taking this chord progression and just running with it. So what if I want to take it a step further? Well, I have some different devices here that I might use. Um, first thing I want to talk about is the arpeggiator. So if I have this chord progression that I built and then I wanted to go and make it a bit more complex, then I can use an arpeggiator and get a bit more complex voicing. And so what I mean by that is if I just turn this on, put the rate at 1.8, the gate is at 200%, and now it sounds like this. And so what's great is I can go ahead and use Control Shift T or on a Mac you just do Command Shift T to make a MIDI track and on the MIDI track where it says All Ends here I just choose that and choose this Piano Arp because that's what this is called here. And if I arm it and hit the record button, then I will get the actual MIDI of the ARP that I just went and kind of generated. And so now I have this data so I can go and manipulate the notes, I can you know kind of shorten them if I wanted to still, I can kind of make it a bit more my own as well because now I have this information here. Alright, so we've looked at different ways to kind of go and gain some ideas for starting a song, but how do we actually get it to turn into a song? Well, one of the best things that you can do, and is also a great inspiration point, is just using reference tracks. And now, I've talked about this before, but seriously, using reference tracks is a great way to going and getting a song fleshed out. Now, I'm not saying to go and copy a song verbatim and render it out and be like, okay, here's my song, because it's not, you're copying someone else. but kind of copying the structure of the song itself will give you an idea of how a song structure works. So I've talked about this before, but a song structure is A, B, A, B, C, B when it comes to a pop song and when it comes to a dance track, you know, there's an intro, a build, a drop, 
a break, a build, a drop, and then some type of outro. And so that's kind of like an overall idea behind song structure but obviously there are many songs that go and break that song structure too so take a song that you like drag it into your DAW and just put it at the top of like the, your channels or whatever and you know you can turn it off and turn it back on and you can kind of copy the, the actual structure of the song and that is a good way to kind of take all of the different kind of ingredients or ideas that I've shown you here and actually putting them all together. If you want more information about using reference tracks, I do talk about this in another video here on the Unison channel where I go into how to finish your tracks. You can find the video right up here if you click on that and it'll take you to the video. The last thing I want to talk about are using templates. And what I mean by that are, you know, when you first open up Ableton, as you can see here, it is a blank canvas. There is nothing here. There's a couple of MIDI tracks and a couple of audio tracks. But outside of that, there's nothing really to get my inspiration going. So what I can do is I can go ahead and choose a couple of my favorite plugins or synths and just go ahead and plug those in so that when I open up Ableton each time, it's all just ready for me to go and available. Now, personally, I don't use templates, but I know it can help a lot of producers when they are working. So um, if I were to go ahead and make a template, I would probably go ahead and say, for example, drop Serum on here, and I would maybe drop, let's see, maybe a drum rack so that I have something for drums. And so then maybe I'll drop a couple of samples in there so I could go ahead and just say, look up kick and I can grab some kick samples. I'll just grab, I kind of like that one. And then maybe a clap, look for a clap. That one's pretty nice. Let's see what else. Maybe some hats and stuff. Sure, we'll go with that. So I won't go too deep into making a template, but let's just say that this is what I want to save it as. I would just go ahead and go here and just do save life template as. And so that way, each time I go ahead and open up Ableton, all of this is right there, ready for me to go. And I could just go ahead and arm this and just start kind of jamming out with the, these drums here or the synth, whatever it might be. You can also go ahead and save a preset as well if I were to choose a preset. If I just went ahead and chose like the Zeta Wave, for example, and then if I go ahead and save as live template, then I have my template right there and I can just call it uh, Aaron's template. And so then as you can see, the template is right here and then all I gotta do is just double click on it. No. And there we go. It's right there. Loads brand new. All right, once again, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video today. If you have any feedback, any thoughts, please drop a comment below. If you like what you saw today, please consider subscribing to the channel. Leave a like on the video. And also, if you liked the sounds that were used in today's video, you can grab a bunch of free packs off of Unison's website where I use some of the MIDI and other samples that were used in the project from today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.